Hey, hey, everyone. Let's take a look at free response number two. So it says a husband and wife, Zendaya and Tom, share a digital music player that has a, that has a feature that randomly selects which song to play. So just off, I, I see this right out the gate. I'm going to put random in there. Okay. A total of 2,384 songs were loaded onto the player. All right. I'll keep that number in mind. Um, some by Tom and the rest by Zendaya. Suppose that when the player was in random selection mode, so again, another random happening here, okay, 13 of the first 50 songs selected were loaded by Zendaya. Okay. Construct and interpret a 90% confidence interval for the proportion of songs on the player that were loaded by Zendaya. Okay, so a bunch of buzzwords. First off, I have 90% confidence interval. So that's directing me to make a CI. And I'm going to construct it and interpret it. That's fine. I do see the buzzword of proportion. So that's helping me figure out I'm in proportion land. And then I want to look at songs that were loaded by Zendaya because we have Zendaya and Tom, but... They're asking us to look at Zendaya's. Okay, so let's let's put some notes here on the side. I know I'm in prop land. I'm gonna be constructing a confidence interval. So I'm gonna need a Z star critical value, right? And I have a one sample CI. So let's work on the write up. Now, unlike a hypothesis test, this one has four components to it. So anytime you wanna write up a confidence interval, right? The first thing you wanna check are your assumptions. Then you're going to want to make a title. Then you actually want to construct it. There's the number crunching. And then you want to interpret. So those are the four components that I'll be looking for when I grade your final. All right, so let me. I'm going to erase all of those right now, and I'm going to go through them a piece at a time. All right, so the first thing we're going to start with is assumptions. All right, so the first thing I need to check is did I have a random sample? A random sample, oops, that's how you spell random, random sample. And in terms of, I need the, I need these songs that were loaded on the player to be randomly selected, and they, they are. It was stated right there. All right, the next thing I need to check is that n p prime and n times 1 minus p prime are greater than or equal to 10. And this is so that I have at least 10 successes and 10 failures happening. So let's take a look at P prime. So I need to figure out from my sample how many songs were loaded by Zendaya. And they said that I had 50 songs in the sample. And you might be saying, well, what about this 2,384? 2, That's the population size. That we would call capital N. This is the sample size. All right, so I know that 13 out of 50 songs we're loaded by Zendaya, all right, and this is about 26%. And because this came from a sample, this is a statistic. All right, so let's go crunch this. So if I have NP prime, this is going to be 50, and I'll leave this as fractions times 13 out of 50. That's going to give me 13 songs loaded by Zendaya, which is greater than or equal to 10. And then I got to find the complement. And if you want to write this as a decimal and not a fraction, that's fine. This is gonna wind up being 37, which is also greater than or equal to 10. Basically 37 of the songs were loaded by Tom. And when I say if you wanna write it as a decimal, here's what I mean. Some folks will be more comfortable writing the decimal 0.26 here. And if that's you, that's great, all right? And the next thing I need is, is my sample size small relative to my population so that I can sample without replacement? Well, let's take 50 and multiply it by 10. That would be 500 songs, right, loaded into this player. And I, I know that there are more than 500 songs on the player because we were told there were 2,384. So my sample size is small relative to my population. So, okay, great. The next thing I want to do is give my work a title. All right, so this is going to be a one sample proportion Z star confidence interval. All right, and so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and construct it. So this is always my formula. Oops, let me get a nice Z star there when I'm in proportion land. This will always be the proportion land, or I should say the one sample proportion CI formula. 
All right, and I have a bunch of numbers I'm, I'm going to plug in, and then I'm going to flip over to my calculator and actually have my calculator do the work for me, the actual number crunching. So let me just point out where all of these things are going to go, and I'll use a different, different color. So I know that P prime, or 0.26, it's going to go here, here, and here. All right, let me get a different color up. We'll go green. I know N, my sample size is 50. I'm going to put that here. And then the only other thing we need is this Z star, but oh, you know, let me just do a different color so that it stands out. But we know that we need 90% confidence and the Z star critical value for that is 1.645. And we can get that from that giant table, but I'm gonna go and write these numbers down. So I'm gonna have 0.26 plus or minus, this is gonna be 1.645 times the square root of 0.26 one minus 0.26, and then we're gonna divide that by 50. And again, you could crunch this, and when I say this, I mean this thing. You could go figure out what this is, right, if you wanted to on your calculator. If you're going to go that route, I would recommend that you find the margin of error first, right, crunch that number on your calculator, and then add and subtract it from 0.26. But me personally, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna flip over to my um, calculator in just a moment, and I'm gonna get these numbers straight from my calculator screen. So I will catch you on the flip and we will crunch these numbers on our calculator. Hey everyone, let's take a look at how to run this on my calculator. So I'm gonna go over to stat tests and I need to go down to, I believe it's option A. It's so far down that if you're gonna use the up and down arrow keys, it's actually easier to scroll up. But you also could have just hit alpha A and go to it if you want like that. So at this point, I need to put in my number of successes. So Zendaya put in 13 songs out of the 50 into that player, into that um, digital music player. And this time I need to change this. This was 90% for a confidence interval. And when I calculate it, there it is. So that saves me a lot of time if I just plug that into my calculator. I'm gonna grab a screenshot of this and meet you on the other side. All right, bye. Hey everyone, we're back. So I, I took that screenshot of my, my calculator output. So I'm just gonna finish this question out. So this would be, the CI would be from about 16% almost to about 36%. So let me put 0.362 here. And things that I do wanna point out just so that we remember how this works is if you think of this, if I had the sampling distribution, right? P prime, which is almost normal. All right, so then 0.26, right, would be here. I'm just gonna erase this distribution because we're not really gonna need it right now. And then 0.158 is down here. Right, and then 0.362 is here. And each of these distances, this is a margin of error, right? And this is a margin of error. And if we wanted to find out what that distance is, you have three ways you could do it. You could actually crunch this number on your calculator, right? Or I think the easier way is just to subtract these two numbers or subtract these two numbers. So let me do 0.362 minus 0.26, let me, oops, head to my calculator and do that. So if I had 0.362 minus 0.26, it looks like my, my margin of error is about 10%. So let me put that, I just wanna put that as a note. So this is about 0.102, and this should be about 0.102 on this side also, because the margin of error, the same number. And again, if you would crunch this on your calculator, you would get about 0.102. Now, there might be a round off error, but it's about a 10% margin of error. All right, so with that, we're almost done. The last thing we need to do is interpret this, and we can call it a day. So when I go to interpret it, I would say we are 90% confident. And then in this case, since I'm in proportion land, my parameter is P, that P, and this is gonna be the true proportion, and I can see the words here, true proportion of songs on the player that were loaded by Zendaya. So let me do this, the true proportion, oops, that is not a good spelling of proportion. Let me write that, the true proportion of songs on the player that were loaded by Zendaya. Oops. Uh, is between, and let's see what were our lower and upper bounds. So it was about 15.8% and 36.2% is between 
15.8% and 36.2%. And you could say we used a method to construct this estimate that works 90% of the time. That's fine. That's interpreting the level. But really, I'm looking for you to in interpret the actual interval. So there is our confidence interval. Let me just kind of zoom out so we can see all of the work that went into this. And there's your CI write-up. All right. Thanks so much.